Joe Alton, MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700-page third edition, and also the brand new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings, as well as the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. One of the most common medical issues facing the population today is asthma. Asthma is a chronic condition that affects the tubes that transport air to your lungs, making it difficult to breathe. We'll call them airways. In the United States alone, there are almost 20 million people who suffer from asthma and its complications. Indeed, it's the most common cause of chronic illness in children. Think about what would happen in a survival setting. Stress, exposure to new allergens, allergens are allergy-causing substances, and hygiene issues are only going to make things worse. I usually write about asthma in the spring when pollen counts are high, but winter can be trouble as well, not so much outdoors, but indoors with the accumulation of pet dander, smoke, dust, and molds inside the house. If people are spending a lot of time inside to stay warm, well, they may notice issues relating to asthma during cold weather. When people with asthma are exposed to a substance to which they are allergic, the airways become inflamed. The airways swell, constrict, they fill with inflammatory mucus, and what happens is less air gets to the lungs. As such, they develop shortness of breath, tightness in the chest, not to mention wheezing and pretty significant coughing as well. In rare situations, the airway can become so constricted that a person could actually suffocate from lack of oxygen. This extreme condition is sometimes referred to as status asthmaticus. Years ago, I witnessed and assisted pregnant women with status asthmaticus, and sure enough, not all cases had happy outcomes. A wide variety of substances can trigger an asthma attack. Pet or wild animal dander, dust mites, mold and mildew, smoke or pollutants in the air, pollen, severe stress, some medicines, and even exercise. Yes, physical exertion can actually trigger an asthma attack. There are many myths associated with asthma. One, asthma is contagious. False, it's not infectious in any way, and sure enough, there's absolutely no contagious aspect to it. Two, you'll grow out of it. That's also false. It might become dormant for a time. You're always at risk, however, for it returning. It's all in your mind. It's not all in your mind. That's false. It's indeed due to a cascade of immune responses that occur in your body, in some cases every day. If you move to a new area, your asthma is going to go away. That's also false. It may go away for a while if the allergens that you were allergic to aren't in that area, but eventually you'll become sensitized to some other allergen and it can return. Now here's a true myth. Asthma is hereditary. If both parents have asthma, you do have about a 70% chance of developing it compared to only 6% if neither parent had it. In part two of this three-part series, we're going to discuss asthma symptoms and conventional treatments. Then we're going to follow up with natural remedies for asthma in part three. I'm separating these out because I'm being advised by other YouTubers that shorter videos are better. Let me know if you agree. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.